Hey, welcome back to my shop. Today we have a small tool making project for this is a customer job. Um, this is a wire threading tool to get wires through a rubber grommet, if I understand it correctly. Um, I only got a sketch from the tool and I made the, a CAD model and a, a drawing so I can work in the shop. And this is again done in on shape and I will show you a quick 3D view of this part in on shape. Okay, we're back in my shop. Um, I already prepared the material. It's six millimeter drill rod, 12210 is the ISO number or also known as 115 CRV3. That means it's a 1.15% carbon content steel with some chrome and some vanadium. So it's, it's, a, it's a tool, drill rod is a tool steel. Um, we're going to machine this end here, um, turn the outer diameter, drill it out to 2.6 millimeters and then we have to cut away half of, of the, the material and the remaining part is quite flimsy, it's only 2.34 millimeters thick so um, I guess we're going to remove the material on the surface grinder. Okay, let's start by um, machining them to length and turning down the other diameter. Okay, this is a good job to use the collar chuck. Okay, first we will face off one side of each of the parts, chamfer them, and then we're coming back and cutting them to length. Okay, that way I can reduce the number of operations I have to do. That means with this setup I will cut the part to length and center drill it. I cut them all to length and they are all spot drilled. Now I have to change the depth stop on my collet so I get more overhang and I can turn the section with the smaller diameter. This step needs to be 17 millimeters and I'm setting the depth stop on the collet so I'm overhanging about 20 millimeters. The additional three millimeters will give me some room for my turning tool especially as the turning tool has uh, a lead angle and I don't want to run into my collet, obviously. And that's, that's a good amount of overhang for a 6mm workpiece, but should be able to do it with proper technique. I machined down the first one of those uh, tools and I'm using one of my 45 degree CCMT insert tool. That's one of those I made myself. But 
while I'm using a Kurosera finishing insert, it still produces too much cutting pressure and I don't get an even diameter from here to here. So I took the insert out, I grabbed it in a Y grip and I, and I ground the top rake nice and sharp on the tool and cutter grinder, just freehanding it and I will show you how I did this with another one of those busted inserts. Um, I keep my, my dull inserts around to regrind them for different purposes and as this insert now is razor sharp um, I can first take very light cuts and second the cutting pressure is greatly reduced. Okay we're over at the tool cutter grinder and I take a pair of duckbill Y scripts and I grab the insert just like this. And we want to use this corner to grind, uh, to, to cut on the lathe. So this corner and this cutting edge needs to be the cutting edges. All other can be ground back. So that means we get flat against the grinding wheel and then we tilt it up a little bit and a little bit over like this. So up and over and then we grind it flat. That way we get a nice top rake and a, a sharp cutting edge. There we go. We ground a heavy, heavy back rake onto this one and the surface we ground reaches all the way up to the edge, this side and this side. And if we mount this insert now that way on the lathe and we cut to the left against the headstock, we, have a, we should have a perfectly fine cutting action with this insert. Um, Regrinding or changing inserts is something I do quite a lot for uh, in my shop because I'm rather cheap and I don't want to stock 20 different inserts just to have one for every opportunity that comes up. I like to grind my own high-speed steel, my own braced carbide or in this case my own uh, carbide inserts to the needs I have. That's well suited if you do, especially if you do small work like I do. Okay, let's do the actual turning on one of the pieces. Uh, loading them into the 5C color chuck. And now we bring the tool in and we will take a one millimeter deep cut to a diameter of roughly four millimeters in one pass. And we come back and do a finishing cut to 3.9 millimeters. Okay, we get a good 3.91 millimeters in front here and a good 3.895 back here. So a uh, taper of about one hundredths of a millimeter. That's not a <laughs> that's not a problem at all. I don't need to fiddle around with it, this is good enough.
Okay, drilling the 2.6 millimeter hole, 26 millimeters deep, that's 10 times diameter. And by the way, look at the nice chips, the reground carbide inserts peel off in drill rod. Okay, last thing, taking a small countersink, putting a tiny chamfer on the hole, covering the bed of the lathe, and give it a quick polish with some super fine scotch brite. There we go. Blow it off. And done. Okay, I set up all six parts on this funky. I screwed together two, one, two, three blocks. These are metric ones bought from our Bureau Trade. I'm very happy with them, especially as they are metric. They are uh, 20, 40, 60, I think and have M8 tapped holes and very important through holes for M8 so you can bolt them actually together instead of the usual Chinesium ones. These are also made in somewhere is Tian. I have no idea where they are made but they are nicely made. Um, I, play, I, I ganged all the parts up I clamped a, a gauge block on here as a as a fence so I can align them in line and I butted them up against a parallel that I held up against the end of this whole contraption, butted them up and then I tightened down this clamp which has a piece of paper under it so it clamps all of the parts and not just one. And these are the exposed ends and we will set this up on the grinder and we will grind away all the material we don't need by plunging down. Um, we will use some, uh, some, some hot, hot set glue to fix them in place so they don't vibrate because um, they are not supported underneath them. So um, the wax or the, the hot melt stuff will help to keep vibrations down. Okay, to wax down the ends I'm using boning ferrolite, ferrol tight. Um, you get this in the archery um, and, and supply stores for archery. I think they use it to mount tips to, to arrows for Archery, I don't know exactly, but it works quite well as a mounting uh, compound when you do milling or grinding. Actually, Tom Lipton showed this quite some time ago in one of his videos, so I, I rushed out and got one because I knew I needed one day. <laughs> so I'm using the hot air gun to, to heat everything up slightly and then just try to wax these parts down. Doing this on a piece of paper is, of course, a very clever idea. There we go. That should do the trick. Um, let's keep. Let's let let this cool down. By the way, if you get this hot uh, stuff on your finger, it burns like crazy. Okay. When we take a quick look at my scorched drawing, 
we see that this cutaway here calls for a radius of 3 millimeters on the lead out. And I don't have a, a radius dresser for my surface grinder yet, so I'm going to freehand this radius on the grinding wheel. Okay, I have a 100 millimeter grinding wheel, uh, 60 grit I think, mounted. I have a, a dressing stick, a cure cubic bore nitride stick here, a razor blade and a radius gauge. And now we are going to dress a radius on the front edge of this wheel. And I ground into the razor blade to check the radius. And we're already getting there, but the transition from the radius to the, uh, to the lower surface is still a bit abrupt. So let's take a bit more off there. There we go, that doesn't look too shabby. Um, I will keep it that way. I will very lightly dress the other diameter of the wheel. I should have done that before I dress the radius, but... Okay, that's the general setup. I have my Fogbuster mist coolant sprayer over here on the end of the table. I have the whole setup done on the magnet with a parallel spaced away from the back rail, so I have some some space to work. I have the grinding wheel and I stepped down 3.4 millimeters and now I'm moving slowly in and remove all the material. Then I will pull back, take a measurement, redress the wheel and grind it to final thickness. And here between all the gunk you can already see the removed material. Um, the open, everything is gunked up with the um, mounting wax and with grinding dust and coolant so uh, you can't see much at, at the moment but the radius is coming out very nicely it seems to work great Okay, complete change of plans. Um, the multiple setup with the epoch, um, with the glued down pieces on the one, two, three blocks didn't work out that well. Um, it was hard to measure the, th the remaining thickness of the part. And second, I overshot my dimensions completely, so the parts were wasted. Um, I, I, I did a miscalculation on my depth adjustment and the remaining thickness was about one millimeter instead of 2.34 millimeters. So I ordered more six millimeter drill rod and started all over. And what you see here are three finished parts. And I changed my method here. Um, I, I machined them on the lathe just as before and then I went in and I roughed out most of the material 
with a straight grinding wheel just holding the part in a v-block that was uh, way more safe and, and more controllable in this case now we go back to, to the surface grinder with a grinding wheel that has the radius on it it's the wheel that I dressed early in this video and we're going to grind this to final thickness and do the radius here and then we will end up with parts that just look like this nice and pretty uh, they need still some deburring but apart from that they are done and coming out beautiful okay I have a, a V block up here on the magnetic chuck and loading the part in set my my offset here with the with the caliper this is not super critical so um, the caliper dimension is good enough but now I need to align the flat area here that I already roughed out to be somewhat leveled I'm running the dial test indicator across the flat and I use a pair of Y scripts lightly gripping around the part to adjust the orientation. Okay, we get 29 over here and we get 29 over here, so that's perfectly fine. Now we can lock down the V block. Remove the Y grip and double check it. There we go. Remove indicator. Now we grind away all the material. And yes, I have the guard removed partially, so um, I have uh, clearance here between the V block and the grinding wheel, or between the wheel head. Okay, now it's just a matter of uh, moving back and forth and stepping in. There we go, now we just need to clean up the part on the bench with some needle files and some uh, sanding. Okay, I finished them all on the grinder and now it's time to deburr them. I already sorta of deburred these ones but this one is right off the grinder and you can see a lot of flashing or uh, burr got pulled over over the central hole in the part. So that's the burden, and that's a good opportunity to get out uh, the good needle files, not the beater ones. Um, I will start by just using a, a utility knife and scrape out most of the heavy burrs. Just like this. Then I take a, a very fine flat needle file divert the sides of the slot with it. And I will break the edges on the side too, very lightly. Removing all the burrs. using one of these weird shaped riffler files clean out the back, the bottom of the hole these are a bit hard to use, you, you need some practice with them I use them more like a weird shaped scraper so um, just deburring and working the area down with it not like a real file.
breaking the front edges, rounding them over, just so when the part is when the tool is pushed through the rubber grommet, it doesn't damage it. I'm just easing over all surfaces and edges. These are uh, 220 grit sanding sponges from the beauty store. I buy them on, on eBay and uh, uh, fingernail supply, fingernail fin finishing supply, because they are dirt cheap. 50 of these cost about eight bucks. So it doesn't hurt when you mess one up completely and throw it out. And they are just super useful. Okay, I have the parts in the oven now. And I set the temperature to 790 degrees, which is the hardening temperature for drill rod, or the kind of drill rod I'm using. Um, we will leave them in there at 790 for about half an hour and then we will quench them in water, pull them out and temper them down to 45 Rockwells. Okay, I just reached 450 degrees and now I'm opening the door. Of course shutting off the oven and I will let cool let the parts cool down on air so they have the right amount of hardness. I checked the material data sheet for the drill rod and for uh, 50 Rockwell C you should temper them at roughly 450 degrees C and then let them cool down on air and that's what I'm doing right now. Um, opening the door of the oven and just let it air cool as, as they mentioned in the data sheet. And that should give us nice 45 to 50 rock oil C. I had this one already polished with a, a sponge and some scotch brite and looks rather good. Need some still some work but getting there. Um, and while we're at it we can test the hardness and we'll take one of the parts. I will use the this end but the back side which is a non-functional surface and the scratches from the hardness testing files will polish out. Um, I can start with the 60 Rockwell because these parts are definitely not 65 hard. Okay 60 when I bear down and push, you can feel that the file wants to grab the material. So this is softer than 60 Rockwell. Now we go 55. Yeah, this is grabbing too. Next is 50. Bear down and this is right on the edge of cutting the material. 45. Yeah. Doesn't remove material, it's just scratching the surface. So we are between 45 and 50 Rockwell C and that's exactly what we're aiming for. That's, <laughs> that's okay. Now we need to get off all the dirt. Now we take a piece of scotch brite, super fine, and clean up, clean the end. And the scotch brite, this end will get in the handle anyway. Next, we are cleaning out the the slot. Cool. 
Okay, I think I can call these ports done. Last thing to do is to ship them out. I hope this, um, this video is interesting for you as it's um, kind of an, not my usual style of project because it's a customer part. But I tried to show one or two things that might be interesting. So thank you all for watching and see you next time.